Now, following on from adjusting a standard door where you're just cutting it to a new height, um, sometimes, um, mainly under stairways and such, you'll get a little bit of a different type of adjustment you've got to make. Mainly the angled one, which will follow the line of the staircase. This is typical, as I say, under the stairs. Um, what I'm doing this time, to emphasise the difficulties that you can incur in doing these type of jobs, is I've got a moulded panel door. It's a four panel door and we've got a nice lovely OG in and out going on along there. Right along the line where we're going to be cutting. Now like with the standard adjustment, we're going to cut the line, we're then going to have to put an infill. Only trouble is this time, as you can imagine your infill is not just a square piece. It's got to have that shape. Not too difficult. Follow along, I'll show you how I'm doing it and I'll explain as I'm going. Now when making this cut, obviously you've got the option, you can set up the saw table um, and cut it that way, following um, a, a very carefully laid out jig, um, which it would take some time, I would imagine. Or you can do it by hand, with a hand power saw. That's the quickest. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, now as you can see, that is the profile you'll need on the piece of wood to do the infill. Quite an interesting shape, but nothing too bad because we've got this now as a template that we can draw around. Same with that end. Um, we just need now a piece of wood that is obviously this time longer than that one would be. Remember last time we used this piece, shaved it off and put it back in. This time we can't because it's much longer than what we're needing. So, we get a piece of wood first, that dimension. Okay, first thing we do is a piece of timber, the size we want. And before we go marking out what we want there, we want to get this piece equal to the inner measurement of that. Now then, the inner measurement, mil. We shall now run that through the saw table at 28 mil. Then we can mark out these scallops that we need to cut out. carefully mark them scallops. Now you want to make sure that these are balanced because you've got the three mil hardboard on both sides. You want to keep it on both sides. Well you're scalloping too much out of one side and not enough out of the other. Okay, right, we've got that. Now what we're gonna do is cut these scallops out up here, um, and then we've got an issue to deal with when it comes to the sloping of this, but we'll deal with that once we've got these main scallops out of here. So, to the bad saw.
They will notice there, but when I'm cutting the pieces off, I most definitely left the line on. Because we've got to allow for the three mil on both sides thickness of the hard board that's covering the door. This, these lines were drawn on the outside, so really we need to take an extra three mil off both sides. So leaving the line on and the thickness of the blade pretty much gives me that. If I need to adjust it, I can do it. Okay, now the next issue we've got is with the slope. Obviously we've cut square. We're going sloping. We can't push it in, especially on the back sides of it, when the slope is at the wrong way around. Um, so we need, so it's like you can see here, so what we're going to need, this is going to go up that and that wants to be there. This side's okay. That side, you're going to need to back cut that. So you'll need to back cut there in order for it to go in on both sides, getting it straight. Now, bear in mind when you're doing this, where this is going. It's not going onto this sample piece, it's going onto the main dollar. If you cut everything to fit this sample piece, you will be upside down. So, at this point, put away your sample bit and go from the door. Okay. Uh, now I can just cut them out again. Um, Either you can use a bandsaw if you want to tilt the table and set it at an angle, or you can just use a pad saw, um, whichever is quickest for you. You just need to cut that down so that it follows that same line there. And that's all it is, on both sides. them points there that ours are much thicker still so we've still got more to come Good edge, good job me. Good idea to mark it, make sure you don't get mixed up. Okay, we'll just chop them on the mitre saw now to get that angle that we want.
still quite a bit on these. So a lot of shaving around with this until they fit nicely into there. So something to be done. Now if it does split into a couple of pieces at these points, it's still manageable. Just it's a little better if it's not. Okay, now we want to get a load of clamps on that. Don't put them on too far, it's only going in 10 mil. It's the only bit you want to grip, it's the bit that's going in. Right, as you can see there, now we are filled back in again. Once that's cured, tomorrow, I will come back, plate it nice and level, get it all nice and cleaned up, and then all these little gaps, I'll put a bit of general filler in there. Now, next day, everything is, or should be, good and cured. Get the clamps on, um, and get it filled. Now, all I'm using, I've got a, a few different terms, um, Tights um, and colours actually. I mean, this one's just a, a plain white, and as you can see, it's a premium grade filler. Um, I have a bond, so it's pretty good stuff. Ooh. Right, and then, as I say, just force lots in to the gaps. Okay. That shouldn't take long, leave it half an hour or so. And um, that should be well ready to stand now. Right, now that the uh, filler's all well and truly dried, I've very kept with some um, sandpaper going into all the profiles just to take it out of there first. Because when you come to paint it, that will show quite visibly um, if that's not been taken out. Okay, so I'm just gonna take that down now to clean up the edge. Pretty, pretty damn good. 
Certainly as good as any of it. Right, so I just want to put a bit of sand on the edge. Just sand block on the uh, edge is just to take off because it's hard but take off the surface. that sharp corner off there and that's all Well, there we have it. Cut, infilled, filled up, sanded down. Perfect angle of what I want. And it's every bit as solid as when it came out of the factory. There, you can see? Perfect infill. Okay, now that's ready to go on site. I'm now put on the hinges and the latch where I need it. And that's it, which obviously yours will be as you want. Um, so no point in teaching how to do that one, that's just normal. Okay, well, hope you found that interesting. If you've got any questions, just put them in the bottom and uh, I'll do my best to reply to all of them. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.